For both better and worse, Microsoft's HoloLens 2 is ahead of its time. The $3,500 headset is a trailblazer, offering a tantalizing glimpse of a future we otherwise only read about in patent filings. But the technology behind HoloLens is here before it's truly ready, or at least ready for consumer adoption. That's why this thing is so insanely expensive, and why Microsoft has focused on an enterprise market for it so far. In doing so, it's avoided a high-profile failure like the Magic Leap 1. It's through that lens you have to view this device. HoloLens 2 is an incredible piece of hardware that simultaneously suggests the future of AR is both very bright and very far away, with huge caveats that are easier to accept as necessary trade-offs in this early stage. Now, Microsoft brands this headset as a mixed reality device, which is a little confusing. It's really just an augmented reality headset. It features a pair of transparent lenses that project virtual images into the real world. With a limited field of view and the inability to show fully opaque objects, the device doesn't have any VR features. That said, a lot of the tech inside this thing is very comparable to and actually improves upon what you can see in the Oculus Quest 2 and current smartphone AR. Similar to Apple's AR Kit or Google's AR Core, for example, the device is able to understand your surroundings and place virtual objects within the context of your environment. You can attach virtual tables to the real-world floor, or clear surfaces to accommodate scale models. There's a depth sensor that makes this anchoring much more reliable and also enables hand tracking, something Quest users will be familiar with. It's also got features we long to see in cheaper headsets like eye tracking. In other words, HoloLens 2 is like a technological smorgasbord with a bit of everything included. Now, anyone that wore the original HoloLens for more than a minute knew just how uncomfortable the thing could be. It was heavy, bulky, and it pinched my nose, making it hard to have on for a long time. Improving comfort was of huge importance to Microsoft for its follow-up, and I have to say they pulled it off. HoloLens 2 weighs 566 grams, which is almost exactly the same weight as the original Oculus Quest, and about 70 or so grams heavier than Quest 2. However, by storing the compute at the back of the device alongside the dial for the head strap, HoloLens 2 feels much more comfortable than pretty much any other VR headset I've used. A brow pad perfectly cushions the device on my forehead, leaving enough space that it doesn't really even rest on my nose at all. That story will be different for everyone, of course, but of the people I know that have tried the device, basically no one has complained about comfort. It also has my most favourite of features. A front flip! And the back dial, paired with the Velcro top strap, means finding the right fit for you takes just a few seconds. Now this is, of course, still an incredibly bulky piece of kit that looks awkward and I wouldn't dream of being seen outside with it. But when I first tried HoloLens 2 in 2019, I said it was an AR headset so comfortable I could actually see myself using it every day, at least indoors. Having now had that opportunity, that holds true. Moving on, HoloLens 2's lenses are transparent, but not fully, so the view is a little darker than the real world. The virtual objects displayed aren't fully opaque, Microsoft calls them holograms. That said, they're anchored solidly in place and feel believable. There is no denying the magic of experiencing head-worn AR for the first time. Even the kit's introductory tips app proves to be a Moorish treat, showing a virtual hummingbird that flutters about as if it was really there. So unlike VR, which is currently used for games and entertainment, HoloLens 2 really shows you why AR has so much potential as a productivity tool. So, for example, with Microsoft Mesh, you can join virtualized versions of your friends and workmates anywhere in the world for a collaborative experience. It feels like someone is really in the room with you and we can seamlessly pass objects to each other, resize them, and even draw in 3D space, just like this. It's really, really cool, but it's also just the beginning of what Mesh wants to do. Imagine then if I need to access my phone, PC, or grab something from another room. HoloLens 2 doesn't require me to remove the headset like VR would. Now on paper, removing these barriers might seem superficial, but in practice it's anything but, and really demonstrates how AR can be a useful tool. Now thanks to its depth sensor, HoloLens 2's hand tracking is incredibly solid, far more so than what's currently on offer with Quest 2. Simply pinching a 3D asset will let you grab and move it with your hand, and you can use air tap with your thumb and finger paired with pointers to manipulate objects and windows from afar. I've had very little issue with these sorts of gestures, but there are some caveats we'll get to in a bit. You can also basically voice operate the device by bringing up a pointer to look at options and then speaking to select them. Select. Meanwhile, using Microsoft Edge, Photos and Firefox Reality, I can place browser and playback apps around physical space, not as tabs, but as whole other screens. These anchor to a space and are ready to just reach out and touch. No more smartphone style app juggling, everything you need is laid out right in front of you. Now concepts like these are undoubtedly going to play a huge part in AR's future, but with HoloLens 2, you can already get a taste of them. That said, 
there are some major caveats to talk about. Field of view is the big one. Again, HoloLens improves on the field of view of the original, but the horizontal field of view of 43 degrees and a vertical field of view of 29 degrees only captures a very small slice of the world around you. You're seeing direct capture from the headset's camera, looking at this lovely virtual version of Notre Dame. But it's not quite an authentic representation of what I'm seeing right now. Here's the window I can see, and everything outside it is cut off. So I have to be all the way back here to see the full thing. So unless you're standing at a distance, the images you see inside HoloLens 2 will likely be cut off by those restricted borders, and it kind of ruins the immersion most of the time. It is without a doubt the headset's biggest flaw and the primary reason that, as impressive as it is, HoloLens 2 doesn't feel ready for mass adoption. Interacting with this world can also be a bit of a mixed bag. Yes, hand tracking is mostly dependable, but paired with a limited field of view, it can make interacting with apps a hassle. Hand tracking isn't one-to-one, -one, which makes interactions feel sluggish compared to the responsiveness of a PC or VR controller. And it also struggles with occlusion and the tracking's field of view. Take the browser for example, if I want to interact with a web page, I want to bring the screen close to me so I'm not reaching out too far every time I want to select something. But doing that cuts off half the page from view, meaning I have to strain my neck scrolling up and down the page. It makes web browsing much more strenuous and sluggish than it is with a mouse and keyboard. That may speak more to the need to redesign the web for AR than AR's need to accommodate current formats, but it's still a problem in the here and now. Moreover, typing on the virtual keyboard can only be done with your index fingers, which slows web browsing considerably, though Bluetooth keyboard and mouse support is included. Battery life meanwhile varies. You could keep the device on your head and only use it intermittently for about three hours or so. This is me, Jamie, and over here is Ian Hamilton. Hello, welcome. But constant use in something like Mesh will bring that crashing down to around the two hour mark, if not less. Elsewhere, you will notice some screen hitches from time to time. That might be momentary distortion inside the lenses or jitters in image placement. Sometimes I'll select an app and the device will unexpectedly restart on the unit I'm using, and I also notice some lag when trying to scroll through the Microsoft Store or other browser apps. And sometimes loading web pages could be really slow too. Now HoloLens 2 essentially runs on a kind of different version of Windows 10. If you've used one of the Windows VR headsets before, like the HP Reverb G2, you'll be familiar with the layout. A home window gets you to your different apps and the Microsoft Store to download new ones. Touching your wrist below your palm brings up the menu where you can access your library of content. Now this is where it's most important to remember what HoloLens 2 is and who it's designed for. There is not a huge selection of apps out here because at the end of the day, people are buying it for a specific purpose most of the time. So no, there isn't actually much to do inside HoloLens 2, but it isn't really fair to judge it on that criteria because that's not what it's here for. Almost everything on the device is either a proof of concept tech demo or an enterprise application that requires approval to properly access. You will find some small demos for games and other experiential pieces. I've been quite taken by Ford's GT app, which allows you to take a history of the classic car. A detailed 3D model sits on a surface to be studied and altered like a toy from the future, and there's mini games involved too. Pull out all the highlighted parts and place them on the surface. There are several other educational apps in this vein, and if you're interested in gaming, there's a short little puzzler that requires you to guide a robot around a level interacting with different elements, though nothing on the scale of the Minecraft crossplay we saw at E3 a few years ago or that tantalizing Pokemon Go demo we saw earlier this month. Hey Pikachu. That said, HoloLens 2 is about a software revolution just as much as a hardware one, and that's where Mesh kinda comes in. Right now, the Mesh preview app is the only place to experience it, but it really is an impressive thing. Once developers really start utilizing the platform for apps designed for the mass market, HoloLens 2 will become a much more compelling platform, if indeed it is HoloLens 2 by that point. So the HoloLens 2 is an incredibly impressive proof of concept device that sows the seeds for a revolution, if not launching one off its own back. Even as an enterprise only device free from the demands of consumer perfection, the headset's limited field of view and imperfect interaction give it a distinctly experimental feel. Many of the things you've dreamed of doing with AR, from remote work meetups via mesh to virtual video playback are possible inside this headset. But implementation is often primitive, buggy and restricted. Not because Microsoft has done a bad job realizing its vision so much as it is wrestling with what's currently possible with current breakthroughs. It is not an all-day wearable that's designed to bounce seamlessly back between productivity and play. It's often sold directly to businesses for specific purposes, most likely used in bursts of 10 to 20 minutes. Specific as that may be, there isn't anything else that can match HoloLens 2's feature set just yet. The technology to make AR a truly viable new medium can be glimpsed inside the HoloLens 2 but it's still going to be a really long time until we get all the way. When it finally arrives though, Microsoft will no doubt be very glad it had this head start.
Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, hit the notifications button, and stick with Upload for all the latest AR content.